Good morning, callers. Again, welcome to the St. Paul Prayer Call. As always, we thank you for joining us on Tuesday morning as we share this time together. As most of you who know me personally know, I am publicly and unapologetically country. And as I often say, I wouldn't take anything from my upbringing. And, of course, I can appreciate all of the things that country people can appreciate. I appreciate getting up early in the morning. I appreciate hard work. I appreciate greasy, salty, fried food, and I also appreciate idioms, little colloquialisms and funny sayings that we grew up hearing. One of those immediately comes to mind this morning, and that is, I used to often hear my grandmother tell me, boy, you blind as a bat. And what she'd basically be talking about is if she sent me to go get something or to retrieve something, and I'd come back and say, I don't see it. It's not in there. She would go in and almost go immediately to it, and she'd look at me and say, you're blind as a bat. Now, what she was saying was that I could see, but I really couldn't see. Now, that statement, I guess, originated around maybe 1,500 uh, based on the fact that most people thought blind bats could not see because of their erratic flight pattern. But interestingly enough, we've since discovered that they have this navigation system based on sonar called echolocation. But again, all of that's another story for another time. But the point I'm making is bats can see just in certain situations, especially during the day, they can't see well. Well, I'm convinced that many times Christians are guilty of the same thing. We can see, but we don't see well. When it comes to what God is doing for us, sometimes we're just as blind as a bat. There's a story um, recorded in Scripture concerning Elijah and his servants. Some of you all may be familiar with it. The story is told, of course, that the king of Aram was doing battle with Israel. And every time they thought they were going to defeat the Israelites, somehow the Israelites knew what was going on. Well, the king of Iran thought that there was a spy in his camp, but that was not the case at all. What happened was Elisha had a relationship with the king of Israel, and he would always warn the king of Israel what was coming. So when the king of Iran found out about it, he decided, look, I've had enough of this. We're going to kill this prophet Elijah. So the Bible says that he sent his army to a place called Dothan to kill Elijah. And so while Elijah was sleeping, the army of the, 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 the king who wanted to kill him was surrounding the city. Elijah's servant rose early in the morning, and he saw him. And he went in and woke up his master, and he says, what are we going to do? They've got us surrounded. Elijah said to him, don't be concerned. Those who are with us outnumber those who are against us. Well, here's the problem. All the servants could see was the armors who had the city surrounded. Finally, God, finally, Elijah prayed to God and said, God, open his eyes so that he might see. When God opened his eyes, all of a sudden what he discovered was what he saw was correct. There was an army surrounding the city, but what he did not see was there was also an army surrounding Elisha. And when God opened his eyes so he could see, naturally he felt a whole lot better about the position they were in. I've got a feeling that some of you all are overly concerned, you're worried, you're down, you're depressed, not because God hadn't provided, not because God didn't have a tremendous blessing waiting on you, not because you don't have a future with promise and potential, but the problem is you just don't see it. You're blind as a bat. So my prayer for you today is that God's going to open your eyes, that you're going to see that those who are with you outnumber those who are against you, that what you see does not compare to what it is you're not seeing, that God has hope, a bright hope, a bright future prepared just for you. But the question becomes, are you willing to open your eyes and really see what it is that God has for you. That's going to be my prayer for you today. That's going to be my prayer for me today, that I don't see obstacles, but I see opportunities, that I don't just see barriers and burdens, but I see blessings. Let's pray together. God, I thank you today that you're a good God and you're a faithful God. God, I thank you that you are a God who specializes, dear God, in doing things that seem impossible. But, God, so often we miss out on the beauty of your creation. We miss out on the abundant blessings that await us. 
God, we miss out on tremendous opportunities because all we see are obstacles and oppositions. But, God, I pray today for all of us in the name of Jesus that you would open our eyes. God, I pray today that you would allow me to operate in the same spirit with the same power that you gave to Elijah when he prayed that you would open his servant eyes. God, I ask now for every caller on this line, open their eyes so that they might truly see those who are with them outnumber those who are against them. God, I pray that you would open their eyes so that they would not just focus and fixate on burdens and barriers. God, but they would see opportunities. God, open our eyes so that we wouldn't fixate on problems, but we would see possibilities. Open our eyes, oh God, that we wouldn't just see obstacles, but we would see opportunities. God, I thank you in advance for what we're beginning to see. Now, God, if you choose to give us 2020 vision, instantly we'll bless your name but God even if it's a progressive process even if dear God we come to a place where today looks a little bit better than yesterday and the day, next day looks a little bit better than the day before we will still shout over progressive vision God all we ask is whether you do it instantly or you do it over time open our eyes that we might not only see but we would be able to both comprehend and fully appreciate all it is that you have done for us. God, we love you, we thank you, and we are excited about some of the things we're going to start to see today. God, I thank you for the increase we're going to see today. I thank you for the opportunities we're going to see today. I thank you, dear God, for the promotions we're going to see today. I thank you for the healing that we see today. I thank you for the deliverance that we see today. I thank you for the peace that we see today. I thank you for the joy that we see today. God, I thank you in advance for all the things that you're going to show us on today. God, we love you, and we can't hardly wait to pray to you again later on today just to tell you thank you for all of the great and wonderful things that you've shown us. It's in the name of Christ that we declare it is so. It's the name of Christ that we speak it is done. It's in the name of Christ that we say 2020 vision is just around the corner. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Now watch this, you all, before I go. i got to tell you the rest of the story. As I often say when I'm preaching on Sunday, here comes the shout. After Elijah prayed and told, asked God to open his servant's eyes, and his servant saw all of the help that he had, then Elijah prayed again and said, God, for these folks who've come to kill me, blind them so that they won't be able to see us. Here's where it gets interesting. God strikes them blind, but then he says to them, Elijah says to the enemy who's blind, you came looking for the wrong person, you're in the wrong place, now follow me. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, if God struck them blind, how in the world could they follow them? Well, that's for, that's for us to figure out and talk to God about when we get to heaven. But it doesn't change the fact that the story does say that God struck them blind and they followed Elijah. Here comes the shout. Whenever we're surrounded by enemies, Whenever we're dealing with difficulties, whenever we've got pressure and problems, if we will let God handle it and not try to handle it ourselves, the things that came to kill us and destroy us, God will make those things follow us. So listen, when you go to work today and you've got that mean, nasty coworker who keeps looking at you funny, who's digging ditches at you, when they do something mean and nasty, don't you get mean and nasty. You look at them and smile and say, hey, I'll send you the directions later on for where we're going. Now, they're not going to know what you're talking about, but what you know is the one that's trying to destroy you, God's going to fix it so they'll have to bow down and follow you. Receive that word in your spirit. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Have a 2020 day and and shout about all the great and marvelous things God's going to show you. Listen, I look forward to seeing you Sunday, and if I don't see you Sunday, I'll certainly look forward to praying with you again on next Tuesday. Be blessed.